yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yo, Eddie, how you doing? Look at all these green names, guys. Look at this tiger in your future in the chitty chit chat. Mark over here also. Welcome, welcome. Addy Varso, man. I'm going to call you May, man. I'm just going to call you May. What's up, May? <laughs> What's up, boys? Jonathan30193. We're going to get started. Matt's outside with the drone, letting you guys all know where to go. Go ahead and pull around back. We're going to lock up your bike. We're going to have a good time. I did not get new donuts, so don't eat the ones on the table. Uh, but we got brand new Chinese food. I'm, I'm excited. I love Chinese food. We're having a good time. Drink some. Uh, Natasha, yes, If uh, only if you're a member, though. You, that way you could do it in the members' lounge so we can see when and where you leave because we don't want you leaving and drinking, okay? So that's the biggest thing here. Yeah, seven likes, guys. You guys remember exactly, Tiger. In order to get access, well, not access, in order to get credit for the class that we're about to have, you have to check in. Checking in is liking this class video, okay? So you have to, okay? You have to have to to get training, and if you don't want to get if you don't want to get credit, that's perfectly fine too. It's perfectly fine. You can just watch and not get credit. Some people have too many credit hours already. Oh yeah, awesome near future. You know I was panicking. Oh, this is for yeah. Uh, I thought my CBT ran out this year, but it's actually running out next year in June. I have until that time to pass my test. Hopefully they allow you to have a little bit of extra. You know what I mean? A little bit of extra time. Yeah, you get a beard. You do get a beard. I'm gonna need somebody to help me out with the classroom chairs somebody help me put these classroom chair chairs together so that we can have some people sit down already okay it's very important to have some classroom chairs getting going how many people just watch the Nick Sanders clip what clip I Nick Sanders what what, what am I watching you're on the chairs thank you tiger appreciate it appreciate it. this Roin. not yet not yet Peter not yet Peter about to start though we got two more minutes we're getting people in i need to talk to the crew though so if you are a crew member i need you to go into the crew lounge right now hang out in the crew lounge go ahead and play some video games but don't get too tied up because i gotta i got once again we have to let these people know what we're doing here thank you andrew centoyo thank you with the chairs what's up david peppers how you doing justin is there any added benefit of becoming a youtube member on top of a patron so the added benefit justin is to have the mustache beard the green name and then on top of that, you get all the emojis that we got going. It's just another way of helping out. I mean, you could be a uh, DDFM crew uh, rookie. You know, so it's $2 a month, once again, just like Patreon. But you get access to all the cool stuff on live streams. Guys, I do this Tuesdays and Thursdays all the time. Okay, so it's just the power of the beard. Exactly, May. The power of the beard. T7 Tanier. Oh, man. That's a fun-looking bike. Uh, probably not lying. Probably not lying just because... Uh, there's some other stuff. I got to do some paperwork in the office. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? I mean, I'm the, I'm the chief here, guys. I'm the chief. Uh, we just made some updates to the Discord. The Discord is absolutely 100% free, but we made some updates. We have an operations chief um, and then assistant chiefs. Assistant chiefs are helping us uh, cultivate a very good community here. Uh, operations chiefs are going to make sure the day-to-day -day is good. And then we also have the admin. The admins. Oh, Justin Esparza. Welcome. Let's go ahead and put that right there. I want it huge right there. Welcome to the crew. You got to go to the lounge. Go to the lounge, man. Get to the lounge, Justin. Put those chairs down. You don't need to help out anymore. Go ahead and get to the lounge. I need you to, to get ready. I need you to get ready. Okay? Thank you, Tiger. Thank you, Sean. Everybody give him the biker wave. Firedog9111. Yeah, yeah. Malakai... Welcome, Malachi. Welcome, new member. Malachi, welcome. Here we go. Okay, here we go. Here we go, guys. Let's go ahead. I got I gotta I gotta talk to you guys real quick. Okay, I gotta talk to you guys real quick. Okay, I'm I'm trying my best to be this is for the crew, guys. This is for the crew. I'm trying my best to be a little bit professional here, but I mean I got my, my sweats on. I don't even have shoes on or anything like that. I'm just kind of relaxing, having a good time. 
But that's not what we're here for, guys. Uh, crew members. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Um, crew members, we need to once again help out all these new riders. Okay. We got a bunch of people coming into the classroom right now. They're sitting down. They're eating all the Chinese food. That's why I have a little bit uh, back over there for you guys. So if you, yeah, yeah, we have a bunch of food in there. So don't worry about it. Don't worry about it if we mess up. So, guys. Let's help out each other. Let's. Uh, if they have a question, I'm not able to answer it. I need you guys to jump in. This is what the rookies and crew members are for. The veteran and senior crew members, you can kind of just hang back and relax. But if you have some really good knowledge, throw it out there. Okay. Remember, rookies, make sure you're disinfecting everybody. I mean it. Like you spray them in the face with some Lysol or something. I don't want anybody coughing on me. Okay. And then crew members, this is where you really jump in, really help out. Okay. So also on top of that, uh, do you guys know? Yeah, you remember? Get off the game. Get off the game. Uh, you guys remember that uh, the Discord is absolutely free, so make sure you let them know the Discord is free. Jump on in. It's the place to be. We have a new gym in the Discord. We have the new writer question, the mental health section. So if you just need somebody to talk to, we also have that in there. The crew lounge also, you know, it's we have the crew lounge here, but it's also on the Discord so you can hang out and kind of get away from the class and get away from the regular people. I Yeah, yeah, I get it. I get it. But the thing is, we're here to help each other out, okay? Smart writer system. The T portion is mentoring and teaching other riders, and that's what we're doing today. That's your job today. Today's my job is to teach and then also explain all the situational awareness, the, the fundamental skills, what type of gear to get, and then really, you know, kind of how to rescue some people too, just in case they do crash, which we're actually going to be seeing quite a bit, okay? Yeah, I, I need your guys' help. I really do need your help, okay? So grab an energy drink. I'm going to get one of Raynan's because she has a bunch of them in the fridge, and I'm going to go ahead and chug one, and we're going to jump into it. So let's get into the class, and let's get started. All right. Whoa, where'd I go? Where'd I go? What's going on? What's going on? There we are. Ha 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 ha. Just making sure everything's working. Making sure everything's working. We're going to get this going. Uh, so today we're going to be going over some of these uh, motorcycle crashes. We actually got quite a bit. Uh, Matt? Yeah. C can you, can you, yeah. Okay. Show, show them all the, okay. So we got one, two, three, four, five motorcycle compilation type videos. And, and the whole point of this stuff, guys, remember, this is why we're in a class is to uh, learn from these crashes. Now I'm going to try my best to make it entertaining for you guys. I understand a lot of you guys are brand new and you don't understand what motorcycling is all about. You don't understand you know, uh, what progressive braking is, what cornering is. And I know a lot of you already have done your research by watching some of the videos before joining class today. But the thing is, one second, let me just go ahead and disconnect this. Somebody is making a little crazy stuff. <sighs> and then Malachi with the squirrel stuff. I can see it's going to pop up. There it is. Malachi Kephart for the $10 donation. Thank you so much for the donation. I really appreciate it. You don't have to. Guys, you don't have to. You don't have to. The thing is, I want you guys to learn how to ride and see these mistakes and making sure uh, you, you just, you know, re you can relax when you're out riding. You know, get the confidence so that you know what to do. All right. But thank you, Malachi Kephart, for the donations. Got to help the start. I can't even speak right now. Got to help start the stream strong with a capital S on the strong. So that's what we're going to do. This is for you. The very first donation of the day, I'm going to drink an energy drink. We got some new things coming out. Uh, we have uh, some Kill Cliff energy drinks I'm going to be trying out and see how that goes. But right now, we're going to do that. So let's go ahead. Let me double check and make sure everything's running smoothly. Right now, it seems like Matt's not on the ball because everything is getting a little crazy here. And let's see. There we go. Boom. I love the new intro. Thank you, Matt, for setting that up for me. So, guys, once again, we are not here to talk crap about anybody. I'm going to try my best to stay uh, happy about watching some of this stuff. But remember, the Discord is absolutely free. I want you to click that link uh, in the chat. That's going to be popping up real soon to join the Discord. It is 100% free. I see this right here. We got Jacob H. just joined. Uh, let's do the bike away for him. Thank you for joining. Let me drop bang energy drinks. Dude, I, I had one yesterday. Also, yes, let's get to 500 patrons if we can. But let's go ahead and jump into this one. Let's start it and watch what happens. So real quick. Now, this is from Moto Madness. Moto Madness and a few other people. I think we have Dirt Bike Lunatic. 
um, and then uh, Road Rage uh, in these videos today. So shout out to them for for uh, sending us these videos. In in reality, they didn't send it to us, but we're gonna be taking it and we're gonna we're gonna use that information to make better riders. So here we go. So right away, uh, Dank Nooners, uh, Jonathan Tiger HC, uh, New York HC right here is letting us know. Yes, this is a Dank Nooner, and he's going to fail. And the, the biggest thing that when you fail on one of these things is that you are going to put a lot of energy into your back and into your butt. Um, doesn't matter how big your butt is. I, there's a good chance that you're going to break your uh, tailbone. Well, it's There's like a couple bones at the bottom of your tailbone. You can easily snap those off and cause some urinary problems, cause some uh, some defecation problems. Uh, basically, it's going to make your life miserable for a very long time. So be very careful and understand the risks on that. There's no real protection for uh, the Dank Nooner uh, failures. So understand that if you're going to do that. So if you're going to do it and you crash, that's, that's, uh, that's all on you. That's the risk you decided to take. Oh, Peter K, welcome to the crew. Welcome, welcome. Oh. Welcome, Peter. Okay. Almost, Tiger. Hold up. So this is his point of view right here. Shit. Not a good day. Not a good day. Six more members, Tiger, to get uh, another emoji. Take a seat, senor. Yeah. Wow, there's a lot to this video. <laughs> All right. There's a lot to take uh, out of that video. Um, I've seen it before, but I never really watched like the full thing. I watch, I watch a lot of it, but. The main thing here, guys, uh, for all those that are new riders that under don't understand what progressive brake pressure is, br and I'm going to say it a few times during the classroom because we do have a bunch of people coming in and out of the class. So progressive brake pressure is basically you're going to get some weight to that front tire by applying that front brake or rear brake. You're going to get a little bit of weight to that front tire. A little bit more weight on that front tire uh, equals uh, friction. Friction is going to equal traction. Okay, So you need to have weight on that on something. Okay, have weight on something to create friction. So what's gonna ha you can ex actually do it to your desk or w your foot right now. So if you put a little bit of weight on your foot and try to slide it across the ground, or put your hand on the desk, try to slide it across the desk, and you don't put any weight on it, it's gonna slip and slide. But put like maybe 20% of your a little bit of weight on your foot, and then you're gonna notice how it's gonna get harder and harder to move. And that's what progressive brake pressure is. You're getting a little bit of weight on it until you get so much weight on it, it's not gonna move. So you need to progressively break on that. So when we move up to this spot right here, Vincent. So about right here is when the brake lights start to happen with the truck up ahead. And just real quick, Vincent Rivera, thanks for doing what you do. Helps us keep us safe. Thank you so much for the donation. Really do appreciate it. We're going to get more donuts with those $2. And then we're going to get more beer with the $10 from Malachi earlier. So anyways, uh, I think I said that right. Anyways, we're going to be moving forward and we're going to look. Yeah, Malachi. Cool. Uh, red lights, that's going to cause somebody to either panic or be like, okay, well, i got to start applying the brakes. And right here, since we're not paying attention, we can't see far enough ahead. 
this person's going to wait to the last second to apply some brake pressure. Once again, if you just slam those front brakes, you're not getting enough weight on that front tire. If you have no weight on that front tire, your hand or your foot, or however your example is, is going to slide. So now it's going to slide, and then it's going to dump the bike. That's exactly what happened. Not enough friction, not enough traction on that front tire. So here we go. And that's what it looks like. Okay, there was this is a single vehicle accident. It was more of a panic, and it could easily happen to you as a new rider if you just slam that front brake. Okay, so now this is the problem that we're going to have. So if we fail in our fundamental motorcycle skills, now we're on the ground. Now we're rolling around the ground with massive impacts, possible abrasions and everything, but this is why we need to have full gear just in case. So he's got a helmet, he's got a jacket, he's got boots, he's got gloves, he's, he's got everything. So hopefully it's going to minimize a lot of the injuries. So if we just move forward a little bit, there's not much I want to talk about when it comes to what type of damage to the bike, what type of damage to the person itself. My main goal is to uh, reduce these injuries and reduce accidents. Uh, real quick though, we have over 100 people in the classroom. In order to get credit, you have to click that like button. So click that like button, you'll get credit for today's class. So the, how calm this other rider is, he's going to be more the more experienced rider. Or it's just somebody that's dealt with very high-stress environments. Now, this is kind of how I act when there's an, like an accident that I witness or if there's like something bad and everybody's freaking out. And I'm just like, okay, let's go ahead and take a step back. Let's take a look, see what's happening. You're okay? I think he's going to ask that. You good? So that's his first concern. That's all. That's what he needs to take care of. And then the insurance and everybody else is going to take care of these things. But it's just, it's so much better just not to do it in the first place. And that's kind of where I want you guys to get at, okay? To be a smart rider, you need to seek and recognize hazardous situations. So let's move forward a little bit more. So this right here is his point of view. So this is the point of view of the motorcycle rider. One sec, I got to take a quick little energy shot. Mm -mm. Oh yeah, baby. And right here, this is what we see. So at the last second, this, this truck in front of us uh, applies the brakes. They didn't slam the brakes. They applied it. The lights will be uh, they'll be turned on with 2% brake pressure or 100% brake pressure. Lights doesn't uh, indicate how uh, fast they're going to stop, but it's going to give you a good clue that, hey, something's happening. Pe this person made a decision to remove their foot from the gas pedal and put it on the brake pedal. And if you can't see around this vehicle, you have to trust that. You have to trust that they're going to stop. So the best thing you could possibly do in this situation is move off, excuse me, move off to the side almost in a lane filtering position. It's like a lane position one is all the way to the median, lane position two is in the middle, lane position three is right where uh, basically he is. But since you can't see, since it's a wide truck, you really need to go like lane position three and a half. Like you're like really almost on the line so you can see and get around them. So if you could see ahead of this vehicle, you have a better idea of what could happen. She says that the light turned red on her. So if you can see the light turn red when she sees the light turn red, that is you guys having the same perception time, same braking time. Therefore, you both will apply the brakes at the same time. It's not this cascade event where the light turns red. Okay, now she perceives, now she reacts. And now her lights turn on, now you perceive, and then now you react to her brake lights. When in reality, if you scoot it over, you can actually react or perceive and react to the actual braking of or the stopping of the lights. That's, that's what I do. I personally move myself to where I can see well ahead of time. And Natasha, welcome to the crew. Appreciate it so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So right here, you can't see anything. So there's the brake lights. So now this is the moment that we have the opportunity to perceive and react. Now this woman in the truck already perceived and reacted. Does that make sense? She's starting her braking distance. She's starting her braking so her total stopping distance started a little bit back a while ago. So now it's our turn to, to perceive, react, and then brake equals total stopping distance. So when does he react? Like when does he perceive and react? Right there. He perceives and react right here. And that is like two seconds later than he should have. And those two seconds could reduce a panic. Those two seconds could give you more options. That Those two seconds can do a lot. And that's the thing is I'm always moving myself into a position so I have good sight. So when somebody asks me what position should I be in, which position should I be in, when cars are coming, when this is happening, this is happening, this is happening, this is what you guys need to do. Put yourself in a position where you can see. It's as simple as that. 
I don't care about line selection when it comes to cornering. I don't care about any of that stuff. I care about put yourself in a position where you can see whether that's in lane position one, whether it's in lane position three, whether you're in lane position two and something gets in your way. So now you have to move to three. Now you have to move to one. You have to move to three. You have to move to the other lane. Now you have to do this, this. I don't care what it is. Move yourself into a position where you can see. And right now we can't see anything. And that's what causes a panic. Okay? Let's move on. Let's move on. Same with me. Learned a lot from Dan and the Fireman. Still learning from Abhijit Shindi. Hopefully I said that right. I'm glad you're here. Guys, if you don't know, I do have an Instagram. Now, my <laughs> I had a little bit of fun today. I had a little bit of fun today on Instagram. Let me go ahead and sh check it out. Um, I had way too much fun. Let's go over here. Let's go here. Let's go here. Yeah, boy! So guys, check me out on Instagram. I am way too bored. Let's jump into this next one right here. And this is actually a good reason why you should wear gear. Okay, wear gear just in case something happens. I remember this one. Oh. <clears throat> Natasha, thank you. stopping holy shit a stick he threw it right to my chest oh he shattered my windscreen that would hurt that would hurt a lot that would hurt a lot. They'll show it, Rosemary. That right there. That's what you hit. Absolutely nobody's fault. Jolly Hammer in the Discord. You are happy to be part of the crew. I'm happy that you are a part of the crew. Welcome. You're a lot of fun. So right here, definitely watch out. Uh, there's not much you could do in that situation. Even uh, uh, having protective gear on... Your body, like a jacket. There's not a lot. There's. I don't even think there's a street level motorcycle jacket that has chest protectors. Uh, you, you typically see that uh, with motors, uh, motocross or supercross, anything like that. So this right here, just in case this type of thing happened and you crashed, it's very good to have full gear either way. So a lot of people are gonna say, well, I, it doesn't protect from that. Well, this is like a once in a like a couple hundred thousand type thing. Uh, getting this right here uh, lifted up off the ground and smacked into you now What is a very common thing that that happens to your body like a projectile when you're out riding? Well getting a bunch of bees into your face sucks getting a bunch of flies getting getting anything uh, That's remotely the size of a pebble will hurt you and imagine getting that to your face And this is exactly why you need to have a full face helmet and you need to have uh, uh, your shield down uh, whether it's clear or smoked or whatever it is, have it down because it is required, at, at least in the United States, and I know ECE, uh, that it has to pass stringent tests. And actually, ECE is going to uh, increase that quite a bit when it comes to the visor impacts. It can't shatter. It can't penetrate at a certain miles per hour. So it's very good to have something like that so you don't just get it straight into your eyeball and lose your eye. You could very easily lose, a, lose an eye with, like, a fly. You threw that right into my chest. That hurts. Yep. All right. Oh, I've seen this one. And here we go. Oh. What type of injuries do you guys think this guy could have? 
if this was anything more. Let me know in the chat. What type of injuries? Think of mechanism of injury. Remember that? Damn, that sucks. Nike's baby tiger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Skier's thumb, Andrew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thumbs easily, easily. Oh, you guys are you guys are figuring out mechanism of injury very well, and I'm hoping it's because of me. I'd like to think I'm a good instructor, a good coach. Uh, but yeah, man, this beard's a little bit out of control. I need to trim it. Easily, everything. I'm gonna tell you that right now. Easily everything, but based off of a frontal impact, there's different types of injuries that you'll get from a frontal versus a side versus a rear versus coming a meteor coming down or versus the bike blowing up between your legs. You're going to have different types of severity with different body parts. Now with something like this, let's go ahead and right there going up and over. This is what you call an up and over incident. Okay. So yeah, skiers thumb easily put you in coach Jonathan, get in there, get pick up this bike for him. But uh, easily skier's thumb. So you're holding the handlebars like this. You're riding. So you're riding. And you go up and over. Well, your thumb's going to catch up and over. Easily snap a thumb. Easily, It's called skier's thumb. Snap all the ligaments and tendons in there. Also, mid midline femur fracture. So your leg, your thigh bones, basically in the middle of them, can easily snap because you hit the handlebars. Uh, his head and shoulder. So his right shoulder hitting the uh, trunk of the Volkswagen. And then his left shoulder hitting the ground. So this right here, back injuries, left shoulder injuries, right shoulder injuries, back of the head. So now the brain is being sloshed around. Now, remember, guys, you don't have to hit your head to have a brain injury. And I, and I tell you guys this all the time. It's just, just to make you sure and, and, and to put it into your – basically in your brain is literally shake your head side to side. Just, just shake your head side to side to side, not even violently, and you're going to feel pain in your head. That's the shearing of your organ. It doesn't want that. It doesn't want to be moving around like that. It wants it to sit still. So just that jarring effect of crashing like this could, could actually get you a traumatic brain injury without even touching your head. So this is why it's very important to have full gear because it can absorb some of that impact and then move it around. And But at the end of the day, guys, uh, try not to crash. Now, supposedly this was a car salesman that bought a bike or maybe he tr did it on trade and he decided to buy it himself and then he took it out for a spin in the parking lot. So, not a very good uh, thing to do. Uh, on top of this, this is a Kawasaki Vulcan S. It's a very good bike. It's a very easy bike. And this is actually a bike that I recommend for new riders. So, let's go back a little bit more so we can... Let's see. So, I can get a better view of the bike. So, yeah, that's a Kawasaki Vulcan S. And... This is something that a beginner could use, but I tell beginners, hey, just because it's somewhat of a beginner bike that you can grow into, you need to ride within your ability, not the bike's ability, because this is exactly what a bike could do to you if you're not riding within your ability, okay? Why did that car back up, though? Where? Yeah, a lot of bruising, Sean. The car is parked. The car is absolutely parked. He ran into a parked car. Well, we'll let it play one more time for everybody that's now jumping in. And then we'll move on to the next. Then we'll move on to the next one. So this is his first ride. Parked car. Multiple injuries, guys. I'm gonna take this opportunity to take a sip of my energy drink. Dark side of James. Kudos to Dan Dan, the fireman, for bringing us together. You are welcome, man. It's the whole point. It's the community, guys. Join the Discord. It's free. Exa Tiger, exactly. But that's really cool. Guys, hit the hat. You have to hit like. You have to hit like to, to get credit for the class today. You have to hit like. Okay. So it's, I wonder if it's his car. He's like, what's going on? Felissimo Ghost keeping it up with the super sticker, bro. Thank you so much. Appreciate it a lot. It's a little loud. 
scared me. Oh, low side. Low side accident. Low side accident. Pushing himself and his bike to the limits. We're on a track. This is where you do it. I treat the track like I would a parking lot at the MSF. Okay, it's a closed environment where you can practice the skills that are associated with it. So in a closed environment at the track, it's only one-way traffic. There's no head-on traffic. It's a nice wide open lanes. And then right here, this is a great vision of why you should go to a track if you want to push some limits, is that right here, I'm serious, this gravel and that grass that we're looking at before the road, that's either a guardrail, a side of a mountain, the cliff of a mountain, another car, uh, what else? What else can we talk about? It could be parked vehicles, it could be houses, it could be buildings, it could be anything. All this gravel and everything is put here for a reason. It's a runoff, just in case you do go wide. And that's really important. So do this out on a track, everybody. Spend some money. I think it's not that expensive considering. Here's the thing, it's not that expensive considering. So if you did this out on the street and you crashed into a guardrail, your bike's done. Okay, maybe your bike's done here too. Okay, not a big deal. Now you crash in the guardrail, your bike's done, and then you snapped your legs in half. Or you broke your back because you hit the guardrail, high impact. Here on the track, you maybe your bike is done, but all you did was tumble. So the price you paid to enter into a track versus just doing it out on the street is way cheaper than going to the hospital and then having lifelong injuries or even death. So why did this bike, I'm going to play it again, but now that we saw it, why did the bike do this, guys? Look at my hands. Why did the bike do this? Okay, why did the bike do that right before he crashed? I'm going to play it again, and we'll go back to the front of it, but tell me why it did this, guys. So let's let's go ahead. Let's go back a little bit. I'll go ahead and slow it down. So why did his hands do that? Why did it do that? And then do that. Why did it do that? And I'm seeing you guys already. I'm seeing you guys already. You guys are doing a great job. This is exactly what I want. Okay. So real quick, uh, oh wait, no, it didn't want to work. Matt, you're screwing up again. You're screwing up again. Let me see. Matt, can you take care of this? What button does this do, Matt? Oh, snap, we're okay, we're up here. There we go, seems to be working now. So why did it do that, guys? Why did it do that? Too much uh, hard on the lever. I see some uh, braking while leaning, front brakes, front brakes, lost traction, regained traction. He panicked, brake, 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 brake. That's exactly it, guys. It was way too much front brake. It caused him to lose control, and his hands flew off the handlebars, and it just it did. It's this huge mess. But how can we, if we fail at our fundamental motorcycle skills, how can we prevent that? If you look at the uh, wall over there, there's the white, yellow, orange, red, and brown stage. Okay, white stage, you're sleeping. You're literally sleeping. You're zoned out. You're unaware, unprepared. You're not paying attention. You're looking at your phone, walking into a, walking off a cliff or walking into a bear. I think we've all seen that video where somebody's walking into a, a grizzly bear with their phone in their hand, not paying attention. Yellow stage is when you're, you're zoned in. This is like a typical riding scenario where you're just riding around. You're zoned in. You're in yellow stage. Orange stage is when you find a hazard. Curves, intersections, default, orange stage, red stage. You use the brakes, you use the swerve effectively, you're on high alert, boom, you did it, done. Brown stage, you panic. Okay, so if we go back to this, yeah, exactly. Slow the F down. So right here, why did he panic? Why did he panic? So it says 20. I think that the speed limit sign up uh, on the top right it says 20-something. We're going 88. We're going really fast. The reason why it's recommended 20 possibly in this situation is, is take a look at the turn. 
Take a look at the turn. It completely dis it, the road dissolves. It, it just disappears into what looks like an underpass. Okay, and you also have a blind turn because you have this big uh, the the off ramp. I'm assuming this is an off ramp. He's going underneath the off ramp or underneath the interstate or whatever it is. But that big berm, that big berm is blocking your view. That's why it's recommended 20. It's not recommended 20 because the government thinks that you don't know how to drive, and and it wants to restrict you and possibly give you tickets. That's not the case. Is that a height sign? Is that a height sign? Uh, it could be a height sign. Who knows? Who knows? But if we're going to move forward a little bit, there's another sign that says it's going to be narrow. So you, now you have a loss of, let's go ahead and make that normal speed. You have a loss of escape paths. So if we slowed it down so that we have good vision, remember what I talked about, guys. You need to constantly move yourself into, into a position where you have good sight. This is the max height sign. Well, you know what? I'm going to say 20. <laughs> it's going to be 20 miles. Why is my crew? Why, why are you questioning me? Why are you questioning me? I'm gonna say it's it now it now it's 20 feet per second, not 20 miles per hour. It's 20 feet per second. Yeah, I'm gonna do whatever I want. Yeah, I'm gonna do whatever I want. Tiger, go get yourself a donut or something. Shh, be quiet. And Peter, you too. Come on now, come on now. So we're gonna move forward right here, but you can't see anything, right? So you can't see anything. So why are we hauling butt? You should slow it down. Get ready for the turn. And the reason why he got panicked, the reason why he got absolutely panicked is because of this right here. Boom. That completely just shot his idea of what this corner is. He has no idea what's going on. He, he's losing his line of sight. He's losing everything. Now it's a panic, but we're going way too fast in the turn. So all these different things, it would have been mitigated and solved if we didn't go fast. We're only going 20 feet per second. Like the sign said, the sign it has nothing to do with the height of the bridge or the tunnel has zero to do with anything of the uh, for the tunnel um, Peter and Tiger have zero clue what they're talking about and this is what we're gonna do so he lost his vision lost his, his line and panicked he applied too much front brake so don't panic by don't go don't go crazy fast don't go crazy fast as simple as that so now we gotta move on to the next one because Peter and Tiger wanted to chime in Exactly, Christopher. Oh, that horn did a great job, didn't it? That horn did a great job. Here, I'm going to turn it up for you guys because this one, I'm going to turn it up for you. I, I turn it down for you guys because it is insanely loud. And it's usually just engine noise, okay? Uh, moto vloggers with good mics and good situations are a little bit easier to listen to. The ones that just have a camera on their head, it's just all wind noise, engine noise. It's just kind of frustrating. Here we go. Horn for the win. Horn did a good job, didn't it? I'm expecting to see some damage to his body. Oh, yeah. Easily a lot of damage. Now, when we talked about the guy in the parking lot crashing into uh, head-on, and there's that mechanism of injury when it comes to a head-on incident. Come on, Matt. Get... Can we get to the video? There we go. Thank you. 
So we talk about head-on incidents and the mechanism of injury of that. So you're going to go up and over, and then skier's thumb. You're going to have you know injuries to both legs, basically everything to the front of your body, and then whatever tumbles, and then you hit there with an angular incident. So this is like a, a side swipe is an angular incident. So you're going to have you know parallel and everything. So somebody's going to pretty much bounce off. You know it's something like this. Now whether a car is going to hit you and keep going, or you're going to hit a car and bounce off. That's angular. So basically, whatever side hit, and it's it's pretty common sense. It's pretty self-explanatory uh, mechanism of injury. It's just that when you have a medical background, you can actually do more. So right now, without a medical background, you can just look at this and be like, he's gonna his left side hurts. It's gonna hurt. His left side's gonna hurt. So when I look at it though, on top of that, and this is why I want you guys to be smart riders. By the way. DDFM crew smart rider if you guys want to be a smart rider or grab one of the station uniforms make sure you click the link that's in the chat but uh, when you have a little bit more medical training when you look at the left side you think of you know the AC joint which is the acroclavicular joint right here with the, basically the shoulder girdle uh, you have your clavicle or your collarbone easily could snap uh, this is attached to your breastbone so if there was an issue where you stop breathing or stop uh, doing anything you had to do CPR you have a, almost a free floating chest uh, a chest bone uh, breaking the ribs could have free floating ribs it's gonna be very difficult to breathe you have you know left sided injuries to the legs so easily uh, knee injury meniscus ACL PCL LCL uh, patellar tendon patella all these different things your femur could snap your your you could break parts of your iliac crest that's a big issue which is the help uh, the hip bone that you could feel if you touch the side of your hips that's called the excuse me the iliac crest you could snap that off and which can cause a problem with for you walking later so I start seeing all these different things on top of ouchies you know his left side's possibly gonna hurt so that's why I take this so seriously and this is why I want you guys to take this seriously is that yeah it, it's gonna hurt but here's the thing you're gonna have lasting injuries for the rest of your life if you don't take it seriously so take it seriously everybody I hope so. I hope not, Tiger. I really hope not. I really hope not. So when I see this, it, it adrenaline could make him walk. Okay, your bones and muscles are like the scaffolding of your body. Okay, it's this, it's, it's keeping things moving. If you had no bones, you'd just be a lump of, of flesh. Like, just look at a steak without a bone in it. It's floppy. If you have a, a steak with a bone in it, there's some structure to it. So when you snap something, break something, you have no structure to it. So your body can still kind of function, but you're going to be in a lot of pain. So watch out for that stuff, guys. Yeah, and use your Ron and uh, exactly. Strap your helmet. Tip fit, baby. Oh, what, what kind of in, what kind of crash is that, guys? What kind of crash is that? I'm gonna let it play one more time. What kind of crash is that? Okay, there. The the big thing about recognizing what something is, why something happens, is so that you know you can uh, hopefully prevent it in the future. So putting a name to things are very important. That's what I like to do is put names to things. So what type of accident with this KTM? <laughs> Jacob, stop. Diamond Burger, stop already. You're already saying low side. You already gave away the answer. Ruined it. Ruined it. God, my beard looks stupid. I see what people are starting to say already. <sighs> Jacob. Jacob H with a period at the end to make it a statement. So we already figured out lots of traction, but we got our DDFM crew members already going a little bit above and beyond. Even, even not even a DDFM crew member. We have Ronister already saying rear tire lost traction so a low side is 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 the type of accident this happens now it could be a fr uh, the front end losing traction it could be the rear end losing traction but ronister went above and beyond and said rear tire lost traction that's exactly what happened here rear tire did lose traction so franco reynoso is trying to figure out why the rear tire lost traction and and franco a DDFM crew member with a sweet stash 
uh, is saying too much rear brake. So not only are we going from what type of accent it is, we're diving deeper, asking another why and asking another how, asking how, how all these different things. So rear tire lost traction. That's how it's a, that's how it became a low side. Well, why did it be, why did that rear tire lose traction? Uh, Franco saying too much rear brake. So now, now that we know exactly what, how, or what type of accident, uh, how it turned into that and then why it turned into that. Now, how can we do, or how can we prevent that? Now I want the crew to ask or not ask, but to tell me, I'm asking you, how do we prevent that then? How do we prevent this? I'm going to go ahead and play it again. So now how do we prevent it? You guys are doing this whole thing for me and I love it. I absolutely love it. And that's the whole point of the T in smart rider is to teach and mentor. And you guys are doing an amazing job. Love it. Love you guys. So once again, we're going to look at it, and we'll do it in slow motion. How about that? We'll do half speed. We'll do half speed. Whoa. What did you hear? What did you hear? Right there. Like right before the tire, rear tire lost traction. What did you hear? That's the biggest thing. What did you hear? Whoa. Right there. Whoa. Bobo man the cruising. Thanks so much for teaching us how to be mature riders and drivers. Hopefully I said that right. I'm going to say Bob oh man the cruising. And then say Bobo, man, the cruising. Either way, I got both of them. Dunzo, bunzo. Exactly. Gas, it twists the wrist. A little bit too much throttle. So now that we know what caused, excuse me, the rear tire loose traction was a little bit too much throttle, we're almost missing a step then. Like, why is too much throttle going to cause this accident? Why is too much throttle in the in the turn, in the in the cornering, cause this accident? How? I'm going to rephrase it like 10 different ways because I know there's a delay with those of you that are watching from home because this whole coronavirus thing. You can't be here at the firehouse. I get it. I understand. I wish you guys could all be here, but this is what we're doing. Free motorcycle classes for everybody, and I'm making sure the crew is doing their job. Okay, I'm teaching the crew on top of this. Okay, it's not, I'm not just teaching you guys. I'm not here coaching and mentoring you guys. I'm, I'm trying to get the crew to think about this stuff so they can go out and teach their own friends and, and show their own friends when they watch these kind of crashes. So why would too much throttle in a turn cause a loss of traction? Why would it? So Robert Ricker, uh, a little bit of uh, possible water on the road. Maybe, maybe, maybe. The road might be a little sick. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see. But he could have lost traction. He just hold on the handlebars tighter. Okay. Whiskey throttle. Gentle rear brake during low speed. No sharp excel. Okay. Too much lean tires overworked plus wet street. Possible, yeah. Uh, wasn't applied smoothly. That could also be it. Remember, uh, slow is smooth. Smooth is fast. So if you're slow to, if if you practice slowing down your movements and just making them smooth, before you know it, all your movements are gonna be faster and faster and faster and faster, but smooth. Okay, so it's very important. So leaning is 90% traction, so throttle is 20%, which is 110% no good. So yeah, you can mess around, Tiger. Exactly, you can mess around with the percentages. So if it's an easy turn, it could just be using 50% of your tire traction, and then you all of a sudden dump 60% of throttle into it. You know, you could have been maintaining like 30% throttle, 50% lean. So now you have 80% total tire traction being used. But then you accidentally gave it that little like he did. So watch him. So let's say right now he's doing about 80%. So he has 50% turning, 30% throttle, and that's what it is. So he's 80%. Soon as he did that and transferred power to that rear wheel, instead of being 80%, it might have been 110%. And now we just overfilled that cup. We just we did too much. Uh, we we requested too much traction that our tires could do, and then it dumped. So all this stuff, you see, you guys understand. You guys understand that when I look at one of these crash videos, I don't just think that was a low side, cool end of story. Let's move on to the next. And this is what I do for everything. And I probably have a really screwed up brain for this. <laughs> it's 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 probably anxiety or something. But the thing is, 
when I see that, I ask how, why, when, all these different questions. Then on top of that, it's like, well, okay, too much throttle makes them low side. Why? And then I look at traction. Then I look at this. I look at that. That's what I want you guys to do. That's what I want the crew to do, and that's what I want my students to do. By the way, guys, have some uh, – well, don't eat these ones. These ones are a little dry, but have some Chinese food. Don't touch anything unless you've already washed your hands. But this is one of the big reasons why – I hyper focus on the crew itself because there's only so much stuff I can do. Like I could be teaching the class. And I, 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 yeah, yeah. Take a break. Uh, did did I not say take? A, I didn't say take a break. Okay, so this is just for crew. Yeah, everybody else that's not a crew member, go bathroom break real quick. We're gonna we're 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 not done yet. We're not done. We have an hour and fifteen more minutes to go. Yes, rookies, take care of it. Take care of it. This is for crew. This is for crew only. Okay. So there's only so much I can do. I just want you guys to understand. It's like I, if I just quit making classes or videos or anything like that, then I feel like there's not enough education out there. So I need the crew to pick up and, and spread the awareness. Okay. Spread everything. Spread the teaching. Spread everything. Help out. Do all this stuff. Tiger, I see you. Yeah, dude. I, Tiger, I see you, man. I see you you're answering some questions. Peter, I, I see you some an answering some questions. Man, I've seen everybody answering some questions. So you guys are doing great. Keep doing what you're doing. Answer what you know. Help out the rest. Are they coming back in? Yeah. All right. Have them sit down. I need I need one of you. I need one of the rookies. I need one of the rookies to get some get some more food. We're running out. We're we're con it's just it's just too much. We're just doing too much. I sorry guys. I have to go, I have to go back to class. These rookies aren't doing what they're supposed to be doing. Okay. Okay. Take care of it, rookies. Come on. Come on. All right. Let's go to the next one, baby. Let's get some more energy. Jonathan, you got the grill going? Dude, thank you. Thank you. Um, see if it needs a little bit of cleaning. I, th I think uh, Matt was playing around with the grill last night. All right. Here we go. I'm going to play it one more time. I want the crew, just the crew. Okay, students, those of you that don't have uh, a green name, Go ahead and be quiet real quick. Okay, I, I, I want you, I want to, I'm testing the crew right now. I'm testing the crew. Everyone else, shh. Everyone else, stop. Everyone, everyone else, stop. Everyone that doesn't have a green name, just be quiet real quick. Just real quick. I'm testing the crew right here. Okay, this is for the crew. I want you guys to see what did I do with the crew. Okay, crew. Okay. Okay. Here's the thing. I want you to pick out the one thing, the one thing. That we could change right here, right now, that would have prevented this. The one thing. Just one. What's the one thing? I'll play it again for the crew. Double checking. I think uh, Miss Fireman might be uh, stopping by the firehouse. Um, so if she does come to the firehouse, we're gonna have to take a quick break. But uh, this is for the crew, guys. This is for the crew, and, and I see it. I see it. So real quick, everyone else that's not a green name, take a look at what the crew says. Okay, speed, 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 and then Bobo the man, the crew's and became a rookie member. Thank you so much. You're part of the crew. You can answer this too if you want, man. Uh, you do have to clean up a little bit. Speed, speed, speed is right hand on the throttle, right? Uh, slow the hell down, too fast, too much lean, speed, 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 making him have more lean angle. Now, now I'm opening up to everybody. Everybody else, everybody else, everybody else. Why was he going too fast? 
And we're going to look at this. I'm not going to give you guys any more tips. Why was he going that fast? Why? I want everyone else, including the crew, if the crew wants to, if the crew wants to, why was he going that fast? Discovered how far his handlebar sticks out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Ego, mindset, ego, being dumb from lying. Ronister, Addy Varso, ego. If you are a crew member, let's see some ego in the chat. Now, why do you guys think ego? Maybe that? Do you think he might be trying to get a cool picture? Machismo! I haven't heard that one in a while, Robert. I love that one. I love that one. Robert Ricker with the machismo. Got a little bit of the machismo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ego, ego, ego. Trying to look cool. Oh, there's his mates. It's it. This is the thing. This is the thing. There's no centerline stripe, so vehicles uncoming don't really have a good gauge outside of the fact. Okay, I think I should be over here on this side. Uh, and then same thing with this rider. It's like, well, where's the center line? How should I do it? So more than likely, this motorcycle rider went a little too uh, far into that little apex. You know, the apex is the uh, closest portion. Like if you're turning the where you are closest to the inside is the apex. If you do that at the very beginning, it's an early apex. If you do it at the very end, it's a late apex. If you do it at the beginning and the end, it's a double apex. So that's the thing. The closest you are to the inside is the apex. And he went really close. Went really close with oncoming traffic. And this is exactly what I was talking about earlier when it came to that track day type stuff. Pay for a track day. Because you don't have oncoming traffic. You never have to worry about a car pulling and doing this type of stuff. Okay? Now imagine if it did more damage. It didn't just... Imagine if it was like six inches, not even six inches. Imagine if it was three inches more to the left. Let's say he, he turned in about three more inches. You know what I mean? Imagine if he turned in about three more inches. This could have been way worse, right? This could have been way worse. Not good. He has good body position. He's got all that stuff, but it could have been way worse. Very lucky. Oh. A little bit of loss of traction on that one. So if on a on a on like this, um, if you're gonna lose traction, I would have go for that escape route, which is straight ahead. I would have just straightened up and called it a day. I wouldn't try to get back on the track right away. I'd get over there and then kind of go back. Um, but as soon as he touched that paint with too much uh, turning um, for the bike, once again. Loss of traction. The slippity slippity slop. All right, what do you guys think is going to happen here? Tell me what you guys think is going to happen here on this on this one. So while they're doing that, I want to talk to the, the, the crew real quick. While he's doing that, while he's up there, if, if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's... up on the screen guys if you want to become a crew member click that join button and be a part of the crew you get access to all this cool stuff discord's absolutely free but you get access to the crew lounge we're going to have massive updates because we have a bunch of uh basically staying at home type of situations okay so i'm going to give some updates towards the end of the class or maybe even during i don't even care <laughs> whatever but uh we're going to be talking more about what we're going to be doing for the online community and i need i i keep coming back to the lounge because i see a bunch of you guys in here but i absolutely need you guys this isn't like hey guys join the join the crew just because i want to have as many crew members as possible no i want to have quality crew members so if you want to become a crew member i need you to follow the smart rider system if you don't want to follow the smart rider system i have the opportunity to kick you out of the crew that's how serious this is, guys. But we have a lot of stuff coming up ahead. You guys will be on the ground floor for it, and I need your help. 
okay so let's go back to the class so that we can talk about uh, what's going on here okay let's see low side gonna use back break head-on is gonna happen and it will be tragic dang Peter a little bit of uh, graphic there uh, run wide early apex a car uh, Christopher uh, Anon head on RIP in pieces uh, Peter K run off into the trees I'm going traffic or overshooting the turn near future where you know the vid uh, from Lion um, Felicimo ghost RIP target fixation not looking through turn possible low side from Richard uh, Tiger we need about five more members on YouTube for a squirrel emoji I will do a squirrel emo emoji I have it downloaded I have it prepped and ready I can't believe you already called it uh, yeah five more members will get a squirrel emoji uh, where's his legs head on your miss my legs are gone Katie they're gone it's just about 90% of what happens in the turns all right all right uh, Roberto Vasquez you still plan on traveling if you reach 500 patients you know with the corner yeah so that's gonna be uh, might might be delayed it might be delayed um, but I still want to travel and possibly do one-on-ones and with everybody so let's watch this one Who said run wide and hit a car? Who said run wide and hit a car? Who said that? A lot of brown. Who said running wide and hitting a car? Matt Miller, what Matt Miller, what was your question about uh, backpacks and crashing? Let me know what was that. Let me go ahead and turn down the volume a little bit. So once again, we have the chevrons letting us know it's going to be a sharp turn coming up ahead. It's also a blind turn, so we need to slow down our uh, speed a little bit, and then also practice our counter steering so that we can actually activate a little bit more, and then practice your body positioning so you can move your body more. Not net, not just your bike. And then dumps the bike possibly with too much front brake or lost traction on the front. Yep. Low side. What's up, Joe Carpio? Low side accident. We're just... Why is this so common? Why is that so common? Why are low sides so common? Uh, another one. Yeah. It's it's another low side. This is a decreasing radius turn. Oh. I don't know if this is the same video. Let me play it. Too wide? Yep, there it is. Oh, that's a high side. It's a high side. Oh, no, his buddy followed him. All right, here we go. Why are low sides so common? Price, loss of traction. Yeah, people are... are Guys, here's the thing is your bikes can do a lot. Your bike tires can do a lot. They really can. But if you're trying to make turns as fast as possible, you're going to fail at some point. And then also for ego. Like, it, it, it looks really cool in a picture if you're leaning really far, right? It looks cool in a picture if you're leaning far. So that, I mean, with improper skill, it's easy to low side. Too much speed, Jake? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now take a look at his, somebody, I'm not even going to talk about it. Mechanism injury. What's, what's some of the injuries that, that jump out at you right here? Let me go ahead and, what type of injuries get, just pop out right now? Just, when you look at this, what type of injuries? A, I'm not even going to say anything. I want to see it in the chat. The type of injuries. He did. Whoop. 
Yeah, exactly. Think, guys. I want you to think. Very good. Very good. Oh, hit a car. Hit a car. His bike hit a car. Imagine if, if this was your body rolling into the car and you went underneath the tire. So this one, it's a good view of how much power that, like, the bike, the momentum of the bike, everything just moving. I want you guys to see it. I want you guys to see it. Yeah. So watch that rear end of that bike just slide and just keep going. That rear end is just going to keep going. That is what's happening. It just doesn't have the traction. There's so much forces on that rear tire for the turn. And then you give it a little bit of throttle and it just shoots out. That's what's happening. So I'm going to go ahead and slow it down, and I want you to listen to the audio. I'm going to turn up the audio also. We already did the uh, the low side and why because you hear the audio with the revving. What do you think is going to happen here? Listen. You could barely hear it. You could barely hear it. See you later, Tiger. Get some beauty sleep, man. You could barely hear it. And that's the too much engine uh, revolutions being shot to that rear tire. Now, the moment it loses traction, it's going to rev up even more. But the thing is, it was already revving right before it lost traction. It's, it's literally a split second. I have to do it at slow speed. So I'll do it at half speed, not 25. Yeah. Listen. Woo! It's like brrrr and then it slides. Brrrr and then it slides. Brrrr and then it slides. This is a decreasing radius. You have to hold the turn all the way through. You have to hold the throttle, consistent smooth throttle all the way through until your nose of your bike is pointed in the direction where you can accelerate. And that's usually at the end of the turn. Okay, there's there's different ways to navigate the situation, you know, use, using advanced techniques trail braking all these different things and, and here's the thing guys I say trail braking is an advanced technique it's only advanced because it's too much for a new person to learn but it's one of the first things that you should learn outside of your beginning skills it's like the net it's an easy next step and thank you Casey once again for the two dollars man I'm gonna have an IPA on you man That's, thank you so much but it's, it's easily something that is going to be translated right after your beginner class it's something once you've mastered uh the different things the primary controls throttle and braking separately once you learn and master that you can easily transition to trail braking where you marry them together you put them together to where it has a good traction so right away i wouldn't do it as a beginner rider but once you feel comfortable with your braking and acceleration i say go into trail braking as soon as you possibly can So this one is going to be going a little bit too wide, a little bit too wide on a decreasing radius turn. It's something very common. So you, on these decreasing radius turns, especially if you can see it, so you can see how the road up on the top, you can see that the turn is is almost like a U-turn. Okay, once again with another, whew, I'm going to have, you're going to get me drunk. That's the problem. You're going to get me drunk, Casey. Um, if you can see that turn, take this turn super, super, super slow. It, decreasing radius turns aren't aren't very fun. You can't take them fast. It's not like the type where you can do knee down and, and have a great time. You could, If you're really good at it, you could possibly do it. But you typically want to take these ones slow. On the track, when you see people get super low, super leaned in, it's because they have this really wide sweeping arc of a turn. This is not one of those things. This is one of those things where you need to go slow. Natasa, I'm going to try. I am going to try. What I would really like to do, we'll talk about it. Oh no. What do you think this guy might have failed on? What do you think this guy might have failed on? Let me know in the chat. What do you think this guy might have failed to do? Just looking at this. He 
you went out of the turn, yeah. But why do you think you went out of the turn? Maybe too fast, maybe lost traction, this, this, and this. It looks like based off of how damaged the bike is, it might not have been speed. It could have just been a low side that uh, applied some braking. So it looks like a pretty slow speed type thing, but still, you got a guardrail right there. If you go too fast on these things and you low side and you start sliding, these guardrails will split you in half. Seriously, they will split you in half. I've seen it. I've seen cars get split in half and people get ejected. I've seen it. Especially around telephone poles. Shit, shit, shit. Oh. Woo! Oh, shit, 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 shit. Makes it feel any better, I got it on video. Mr. Out of the Void, yeah. It was already scuffed up. Are you good? You feel okay? I wasn't even taking it, but I took it, and then when I took it, right? What? Yeah, the fork? Yeah, I'm not The fork? I'll track you when you're jammed. I'm not jammed. So real quick to kind of go over some of this, and real and also real quick, thank you Felicimo for the for the coffee. I really appreciate it. Uh, it's gonna keep me a little bit more energized. I've had a long day. It's a long day. I, I feel good though, so I don't think I got the coronas. So we're gonna move for or move back to what kind of happened here, and this is kind of what I talk about by if one thing, like if you mess up one thing, the next thing is gonna be messed up for you. So who here has done uh, like a straight line weave, you know, for like your your test? If you mess up the first cone, if you go too wide on the first cone, the second, third, fourth, fifth cone is going to be really difficult to do because you're going super wide, super everything. So if you mess up the first thing, it's going to cascade into where you're going to have to overcorrect for the next and then overcorrect for the next and overcorrect for the next and overcorrect for the next. So when we see this, shit, shit, shit. Oh. so both of these people went really wide in their turn and this is about as wide they went they went outside their lane maybe went into like one extra lane position in the next lane but now if we take a left-handed turn we have to we're, we're not set up for the left-handed turn and that's what I'm talking about guys if you mess up right here this should give you a good chance to okay I'm gonna slow down so if you're ever in this position where you went a little bit wide in that first turn you have another one coming up slow down right here where you still have room and you still see that there's no oncoming traffic, slow down and then get yourself into the right lane as best as possible to set up for the next lane. Does that make sense? Because these guys didn't slow down, these guys kept going, and now they're not set up for the next lane, and they're going to go wide just as much as they did on this turn, but on this next turn, and there's not a runoff for them. Woo! So he barely went wide. Just barely went off the road a little bit. Just barely. That's what I'm talking about. The first turn screwed him up. The second turn is what's going to get him. And if he got, if he made this turn, maybe the third turn is going to get him. Slow it down. We're seeing a lot of problems here with speed. Oh, shit. So to answer a question about, uh, I think Matt Miller a asked a little bit earlier, but if a backpack can protect your back in, in terms of a crash, uh, it kind of can. It kind of can. It all. De it kind of depends on what's in your backpack, and if you land hard or or what type of stuff that happens. Uh, if you have a bunch of pencils, metal objects, a bunch of other things, if you land on your backpack, good chance it's going to penetrate into your body. Same thing with stuff in your pockets. Same thing with stuff in your pockets. If you have like a very sharp pen or or just like a, a knife in your in your pants or whatever, it could apply some pressure and then damage some of the flesh. I always recommend wearing actual bike. Uh, protection, uh, motor. I'm sorry, motorcycle protection in your jacket. It's level two trauma, or not level two trauma. Level two back protector, and it will. I think it. I think the 
it can only allow I think level two can only allow 15 kilonewtons or, or newtons of, of power what, whatever it is anyways it, it it's <laughs> it's tested okay where where the gear associated for motorcycling backpack's not going to do too much firefly you're welcome welcome yeah his knee also exactly green gorilla knee if this is if these are just regular jeans there's no impact protection for that knee easily could rip your knee uh your patella or tendon that or your patella your little kneecap that's your kneecap it could easily get ripped off i'm serious i've seen it oh, shit, 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 shit. <laughs> Hey Steven. Greason evening. Makes it feel any better. I got it on video. Thank you for the donation. Appreciate it so much. Really do. It was already scuffed up. All right, we're gonna move on to the next one. So we got a bunch. As you can tell, Matt has a bunch of uh, videos lined up for us. So we're gonna hit exit. Actually, let's see what the notification is. All right, cool. So we're gonna move on to this one. But before we jump into this one, I just <laughs> you guys, you guys are doing an amazing. Malachi, we're gonna get to that. We're gonna get Malachi. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna talk about this, guys. Guys, uh, <laughs> crew, crew. I appreciate it. I really do. You're doing a great job with all these donations. We're gonna get more energy drinks in here. Don't worry about my feet underneath the pool table. I'm really that short. But here's the thing, guys. You are doing an amazing job. I really appreciate it. With all these donations and with more and more crew members, we have to make upgrades to this facility. I mean, we got we got video games. We got uh, racing sims over here. We got MotoGP sims so we can practice our motorcycle skills, you know, in, in a simulated environment, you know, because we can't go out riding and everything. That's perfectly fine. But we also have, you know, foosball tables, pool tables, and everything. They are all getting disinfected by the DDFM rookies. Rookies, yes. Make sure... You're disinfecting everything, okay? We got Lysol wipes and everything. We, we, we got everything. We got it all, okay? I'm spending all the money you guys are donating. The only time I, 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 I limit myself to two beers, okay? Everything else is going back into the crew lounge. So, guys, if you want to become a crew member, please click that join button or the link that will be in the chat pretty soon because Matt's going to take care of it, right? Yeah. Let's go ahead and jump back into this. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we're going to jump back into these videos. And the main thing, guys, the main thing is speed is going to is gonna hurt a lot of these people. Vision and speed. And if, if I could just boil it down, if I could boil it down to what you need to know is vision. You have to see. If you can't see all of a sudden, then you should not be going as fast as you are. You should not be in certain lane positions because you can't see. But everything boils down to looking and seeing and recognizing situational awareness. So with Malachi Kephart, thank you uh, for the donation. Hopefully he drinks Stone IPA. I do. I love Stone IPA. Very good. I love Arrogant Bastard Ale and all that other stuff that they make. There's a lot of good stuff. There's a lot of good stuff. But we're going to go ahead and jump back into it. Thank you to the crew for making this possible. But let's go ahead and watch what happens here, okay? What's up, Lies in the Skies? How you doing? You want lightning rounds again? I don't know if there's... If there's a bunch of dirt bike stuff, we'll do it. Oh! Bruce, dude, are you okay? Posterior hamstring repair. Oh, ripped it off the bone after... Oh, no. So what happened there? What happened there? Near future, yeah, exactly. Like, the, they're on this one, 
on this one, I think I, today I spent some time researching and I researched this one. Supposedly, the rider that hit him overtook a car around that corner and then hit this rider. So let's take a look at what, uh, where the other motorcyclist was. Look at where that rider is in in regards to the lane. He's in the complete opposite lane, the very complete opposite lane of where he should be, and then he's almost off the road. So I see somebody here. I see somebody saying, uh, do, 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 blind corner. Yeah, Christopher, exactly, blind corner. Man was on the wrong side. Yes, 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 yes. Um, other rider went wide. Uh, Arnout Van Noonan. Um, went wide. So, like I said, I when I looked at this video earlier, it did say that he overtook somebody on the turn. So when you overtake somebody, you obviously are increasing your speed. And then in a turn, we've already talked about that. He didn't do his slow look, press, and roll. He he went fast to look, press, and roll, and he went wide. So this is it, it, we've been seeing the opposite. We've been seeing the the motorcycle riders go wide and then crash into guardrails, right? So now we're seeing him actually correct himself, but then there's oncoming traffic. This is exactly what I'm talking about, guys. So it's not just, you know, car drivers are being jerks. It's a lot of times motorcycle riders not doing what they're supposed to be doing and then hurting each other. Okay? So in this situation, there's not much the rider right now that can do. You can already see him trying to, trying to swerve. He's already trying to swerve to the left, but there's no escape route. So if everything fails, if, if, if just an act of God or an animal pops out of nowhere or, or something then what is it that we have that will help us what like what can we do like what can we do i mean i think we should all agree that motorcycling is dangerous motorcycling is dangerous okay it's inherently dangerous there's things in it that um if if everything goes right something bad can still happen and a lot of things aren't like that you know, that are that common, you know, playing video games all day. The one thing that could go wrong is that you can develop blood clots and then possibly have a stroke. You guys ever think of that? I'm I'm worried about my parents driving long distances, sitting down for too long because of a possibility of getting a, a thrombic uh, a blood clot in your in your legs and then having it traveling to the heart as soon as they stop and get up and start walking around like these. Th there's there's things that are inherently dangerous when it comes to. To anything but motorcycling it's a little more dangerous than some okay wear full gear wear full gear I'll play this one through and we'll move on to the next there's the supposedly there's the car Maybe he's just going too fast, but he he said that he overtook the car. Jacob H at Gap baby. Excessive speed, Adrian exactly. Adrian Wetton exactly. So just because somebody else does it doesn't mean it's, it can't affect you. Now this is Chase on two wheels. We talked about Chase uh, on the last stream, so let's watch it. I want you guys to pick out what you uh, can get from this. Um, I already know it's going to be an intersection style accident. There's going to be two camera views. But let me know what happened. Poor Jake. Or not Jake. I was thinking of Jake the Garden Stick. No, Chase. Poor Chase. Chase on two wheels. Firefly, wow. Yeah, my leg. Yeah. Fuck. Turn that key. Please. 
that's painful. <laughs> like I, I, I don't. It, even if it was a mistake, and even if I don't like the person, I like Chase. I had a great conversation with him on my podcast, and I, I absolutely like him. He's, he's, he's a lot of fun. I learned a lot from him, and it's just, I don't know. But the thing is, even if I don't like somebody, I don't like seeing them hurt. I just don't like seeing them hurt. I, I just don't. Like, there's very few people that I that I would enjoy to see hurt, and that's pedophiles, basically. Um, but anybody else, no, I don't want to see anybody hurt. Uh, so right here, that's the crash from from the chest mount. And then uh, this is the biggest thing, guys. So if we go back to the class real quick, I want you to look at the wall. So look at the wall over there. So white, yellow, orange, red, brown. Whenever you're in a city, like downtown, because there's a bunch of intersections, intersections immediately orange stage. Specifically identified interest, focus, threat. You perceive a threat, and you're ready to act. Every intersection is an orange stage mode. You need to be in orange stage every intersection. I don't care if it's out in the middle of nowhere. Every single intersection is orange stage default no ifs ands or buts i don't care if you if you've been through it a thousand times orange 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 let's go back so when i see this we should be on high alert ready to act There's the car coming out of an intersection. You're in orange stage. At no point should you be speeding. Now, like I said, we already talked. Uh, I already talked about Chase on two wheels and this accident. He actually told me to look it up, and and we did it. This is like five years ago, guys. He's a way better rider now. This was a simple mistake. But the thing is, I don't want you guys to make the mistakes. You know what you don't know can hurt you. So right here, orange stage, ready to act. Roll off the throttle, slow it down, blind intersection. Look and see where this car is going in the first place, whether they're going to sneak out, turn, whatever it is. Figure out what they're doing. Once everything's clear, then go. That right there could be very painful. So wear full gear just in case you mess up. So let's go ahead and move forward a little bit. But real quick, uh, I want to answer a question. I want to answer a question. I saw a question. I think it was from a crew member. Uh, there we go. So Gear Me Out's already asked or answering some questions. Thank you, Gear Me Out. Really appreciate it. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's let me scroll up. Let me scroll up. Let me scroll up. I saw it. I get distracted really quick because you did the at Dan Dan the Fireman. Which guys, I want you to see this real quick. When you do this, this is the this is what I'm seeing. Oh, look at Destroy. Thank you for the thank you for the donation. It's gonna pop up soon. But right here, when you do at Dan Dan the Fireman, I can see it. You see how it's like a blur of everything. I can see the green. And then I can see the orange. So if you have a question, please do at Dan Dan the Fireman. And it allows me to see it. And there it is, destroying with the donation. We're going to get some more pizzas in the crew lounge just because of you. So to answer that question, um, Natasha, uh, let's say I made a mistake and I entered a turn with too much speed. I realized it after I started to lean. I don't know how to do trail braking. What should I do? And just to kind of go down a little bit because I want to give Gear Me Out a good shout out. Commit and roll off the throttle, but you have to commit or you may panic break. Yes. So when you roll off the throttle, it's not going like, you know, let's say you're at 30% throttle. It's not about, let's say 50%, 50% throttle. It's not about going to zero. Don't do that. 50% throttle, roll it down to maybe 30. And that's going to provide a little bit of engine braking, but not too much where it's going to make that rear tire slide. And then you need to commit more with body position and keeping the bike up as much as possible and looking where you want to go. The biggest thing that people do is that they start to go wide because they're going too fast. And then they start looking at, at the wide part. And then they go towards it. You really have to be like, oh, crap, oh, crap. I'm going too fast. Roll the throttle. I'm looking now. I'm pushing the bike more upright so I have body positioning. Crap, crap. Hopefully I make it. Hopefully I make it. Whoo, I made it. I'm going to slow down for the next one. So that's what you should do. More head and eye movement towards where the exit is where you need to go roll off the throttle a little bit not all the way just to slow it down a little bit and then you need to give some more body positioning okay so right now while we're learning that's what we need to be doing now if it's just insanely like you're just going to crash and i want to crash a little bit less straighten up the bike as best as possible then apply progressive brake pressure if you have room but the whole point is to slow look press and roll slow it down before the turn and for some reason 
you went too fast now we're starting to go into some other issues so it's always better to add speed after the turn than it is to reduce speed during the turn so slow down more than you think you need to before the turn and then increase the speed and then once you get more comfortable with your body positioning and your and, and your manipulation of the throttle brakes all that stuff and you learn trail braking then you can take it at the speed that you feel a little bit more comfortable at with your skill level so thank you everybody for for helping answer that great question that was a very good question i really like that you see how he's looking straight i know i'm going to play it through but you see how he's looking straight and he's not looking towards the end of the turn that's what i'm talking about this is why he's going wide look it's just, it's almost a straight line he's going wide because he's looking at these pylons right here that's what's happening so i'm gonna go ahead, i'm gonna go ahead and restart that He's looking at the pylons and he's going to go towards them. You need to commit. Like, you have to commit. The road's not going to straighten up for you just because you decided to go straight. Yeah, I know, Desroyan. Me too. But if you want to be a member, man. So let's go watch that. Fuck. Turn that key. Please. Joshua, uh, would you advise a learner rider who has panicked in the corner to slowly roll off the throttle or pull the clutch? Um, right away, when you say panicked, no matter what I say, it's going to be a panic and they're going to do what they want to do. So let's remove the panicked part. So uh, how, would I advise a learner rider who has gone too fast in a corner to slowly roll off the throttle or pull the clutch? Roll off the throttle. If you pull the clutch and then you release it again, all the power is going to get shot back to the rear wheel. You're going to cause a loss of traction and possibly dump the bike there. So I wouldn't mess with the, the clutch in the middle of a corner unless unless you're shifting in the middle of a corner, which is a little bit more of an advanced skill. It's more like an intermediate skill. Um, but if you're panicking already in the corner, no matter what, you're going to you're gonna screw up. So uh, if you go too fast in the corner, slowly roll it off to lower some speed and then commit to the turn. It's a, that's, that's all you have to do. And if you go wide still, that's because you just went way too fast. Even that little adjustment of the rolling off the throttle is not going to help you. If, you just, if you're going 100 into a turn and you roll off the throttle to get down to 80, but it's like a recommended 25 mile an hour turn, it doesn't matter. You're just going to go off. So don't go crazy. Yeah, don't chop. So guys, here's the thing. So this is the throttle. This is my little task camp thing. So this is the throttle. I'm, I, I'm like right here. So I'm like 50% you know, throttle. I'm, I'm, I'm rolling on throttle. I'm in the middle of the turn. Oh crap, I'm going a little bit too fast. That's it. That's all I'm talking about. So here's like 50. I'm going a little too fast. That's it. It's not, I'm going too fast and doing that. No, don't do that. I'm going a little bit too fast, rolling off the throttle a little bit. That's it. Okay, that's going to slow you down a little bit. It's not going to make a big jerky movement to that rear tire. And you're going to hopefully make it through the turn because you're doing all the other things, looking through the turn and everything. Now, for more of a novice, advanced skill, trail braking is going to help you out. Because with trail braking, what you're doing is is you're you're rolling off the throttle to slow down, but then you're also reaching for that rear brake or for the front brake and applying a little bit of front brake before the turn, which is going to compress those front forks, which is going to give you more traction. There's a there's a lot involved in that. If you notice how I'm like rolling off the throttle and then reaching for that front brake. That's a, that that right there, just that much, is 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 a lot for a beginner. That's why I say it's more of an advanced skill. Ah, uh, whoa, whoa, mission to kill. Nah, dude, you're not good in my book, man. You're not cool in my book. That sucks. It's one of those things where you don't have much time to do anything. Animals and, and, and things like that are... The dog probably didn't survive Zoker. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you right now, the mechanism of injury on that, it's, let's say it's like... Let's say it's conserve, like way too conservatively, 200, 200 uh, pounds, including the person running into the ribs of a chihuahua. 
yeah, that that dog is dead. Um, but yeah, if you if you can't dodge these dogs, or if they come out of nowhere and you're around animals like deer and everything, uh, full gear is gonna help you. This is road rash. I'm looking at his hands. That's road rash. That's road rash. And this happens in a neighborhood. So if you're gonna go right around in the neighborhood, especially during this coronavirus thing, uh, wear full gear anyways. Wear full gear. I you know what May I agree with you I really do I don't I don't like that I don't like that Oh man that sucks But see how he's able to to walk away from it That could have been way worse if it was a guardrail He wouldn't be able to even get on the bike he'd be dead Real quick, take a look at the runoff. Look at the runoff. Now, there's a wall to the left because nobody's turning, you know, to the right and sliding off into the left side. But look at the runoff. Look at all that Look at all that dirt. And then look at the tires. There's a bunch of tires to hopefully stop you as soft as possible. But look at, look at all the dirt and runoff. And look how wide this lane is. That's what I'm talking about, guys. Do this shit out of track. Look at he low sided. Look how wide that track is. If this was a if this was a a typical street lane, he's he's already done. He's already into the guardrail. And good job on this guy. He did a good job. Straight Joshua exactly. He straightened and then broke it. He he applied brakes. Destroying, yeah, watch this. It's probably going to happen. Look at that. That could have been worse. That could have been a lot worse. But once again, just I mean, we're on a track versus we're on the street. This is this was it it was a low side that turned more like into a high side but you can hear the throttle just get punched right when it happens. Do what? Honestly Oh, that's a fucking bump. Whoa. <laughs> oh, shit. I'm good. You want to help me tip it back up? Got it. My front tire squiggled out from under me. Why? Why did it do that? It's, I mean, I'm good. I don't think I messed anything up. Just tore my jeans a little bit, but... Why did... Why did his front tire get a little squirrely? So there's the line. There's the line for the lane. He's not on the line. He's not in his lane anymore. So now he's riding on the shoulder. Typically stuff on the shoulder is really just for emergencies because... It's not really well kept, and it's not ridden over, so that means there's a lot of debris and a lot of different things. Honestly. Why aren't we using the whole lane? Why are, why are we in the... Why are we here? Why, are, why aren't we in the middle of the lane? Why are we right here basically running, like, inside, inside, inside? Why are we running inside, inside, inside? I don't get it. Why are we doing that? Why are we doing that? Doesn't make any sense. Doesn't make any sense. Guys, just 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 don't just ride middle middle middle. Take do the right speed, slowly press and roll, middle middle middle. Unless you have improper vision, like you can't see because you're in the middle, then get in a different lane position. But 
There's nobody here. There's nobody here. Middle, middle, middle. You get escape paths to the left and right if you ride middle, middle, middle. Especially on a road like this where there's no oncoming traffic. And it's like an on-ramp. Middle, middle, middle. Middle, middle, middle. Middle, middle, middle. Middle, middle, middle. Okay. Let's move past this, Matt. Thank you so much. Man, you're on the ball today. Appreciate it. Really do. Rookies, you guys. Rookies. Yeah. Can you, can you disinfect that chair? Yep. Yep. Somebody was sitting in. They took off. They're not back yet. Uh, I need you to uh, disinfect that. Okay. We're going to get new people in. Once we get new people in, we can have a little more fun. Just torn my jeans a little bit, but. Felissimo, yeah, prof possibly. Oh, why do you. Oh, what kind of accent is that? Marley got it. Thank you so much, Marley. What kind of accident was that? What kind of accent is this? Lion with the high side. Sean with the high side. I mean, I'm good. I don't think I messed anything up. Just tore my jeans a little bit, but... So high side and then what caused it? Lost of traction because ADCJ5 says wet paint. So he lost traction because of the paint. So he's, it started to do a low side, but then in, in order for it to be a high side, it has to grab traction again, and then you just the momentum flies you, like just flings you, right? That's what happened. So low side into a high side because of loss of traction. Why did he lose traction? Because he went on paint, which took away traction from his tire because there's not enough mechanical traction because the paint is filling it up. So like this is a typical road with your tire. This is like what a road with your tire does. It kind of like interlocks like, like Velcro. When there's paint... There's like a little bit, like not enough spaces. So it's kind of like sitting on the top. So you lost traction. And once you get back off paint, it, it grabs it again. That's called mechanical traction. And the paint took it away from him. And then real quick, if, if everything fails, make sure you're wearing full gear. I want to see some Nikes in the chat from... Uh, the YouTube members, I really want to see it because it's a little bit crazy. Even though they're Adidas. But before we really jump into it, I want you guys to take a quick look. This is the Discord. This is live right now. This is live. Rob Bob just joined. Praise the sun. And when you donate, everyone gets to know. But yeah, this this is the Discord. This is absolutely 100% free. You can actually join. Look at Lane's here. Accelerates saying hi. This is absolutely free. Click the link that's in the chat and join up, okay? Join up. Click that link that's in the chat and join up. So if I click this link, let's see what happens when I click this link. This is what it looks like. So I click the link. There you go. Come and hang out at the firehouse. You know, 827 online, 3,654 members. We're going to do a prune, though. So we're going to make these. We're gonna make the membership numbers get down to 3,000 because so we're going to get rid of the people that – that uh, basically just checked in and never came back. I don't know why you guys are quarantined. You shouldn't be doing that. You're going to pass the coronas around. So we're going to actually do a quick prune. So if you want to get locked in right now, you have to join. You have to click that accept invite. You have to join. Okay? Look at that. Look at that. Boom, boom. Join up, guys. Click the link that's in the chat to join the Discord. It's absolutely free. It's absolutely free. Okay? Yeah, seriously, Tommy Der Thomas, only 128 likes. That means only 128 people are going to get credit for this class. Only 129 people are going to get credit for this class. Okay? Here we go. We're going to move on to the next one. Funko, welcome. What's going to happen here? Jose. Oh. I do, Felicimo. I do. Fallen forever. Welcome.
Look at all the help. Look at all the help. Daniel Johnson, welcome to the Discord. All right. One second. Let me see what this one is. The next one. The next one. Are these all off road? Okay. The next one, I'll I'll do a a quick action, chitty chit chat. Get you guys prepared for that. Let's go back to this one. I've purposely like. Sean Casey, welcome to the to the Discord. Daniel Johnson, welcome to the Discord. Um, I purposely have kept my mouth shut. This is kind of like a DDFM crew uh, membership only uh, class, almost. Uh, just because I want to I want to teach the crew. So Thursdays, guys, if we get to the point where we have a lot of YouTube members, I'm gonna make it YouTube only chat on Thursdays, just so I can teach the YouTube members. Okay, does that make sense? I want to teach the crew members how to to mentor. Uh, you guys are allowed to be in. You just can't check. So I want to be able to talk to the to the YouTube members. Let me know if that's something that you want as a member, uh, more focused on coaching you specifically, and then everybody else gets to watch. And then Tuesdays, everybody gets to have fun. And then maybe at some point, we just stream every day for a free class every single day. Let me know. Let me know in the chat. So I see a blinker for this car. So remember, guys, uncommon thing in a common situation. A common thing here would be this car wanting to turn to Chevron. So now that it, I'm, I'm seeing this, like I, I, my, my 360 cone, everything's good. My situation awareness is good. I'm, I'm hyper focused on that. So now what I do when I'm out riding, and this is for the members, this is a little bit more advanced situational awareness, and this is what I'm talking about when I'm talking about this. This is why I wanted to, to specifically say this. Is that now that I that I've been doing my own situational awareness for so long, it's just like second nature. I, I don't ride without my being zoned in. Okay, so now that I have that, it's almost like doing slow speed stuff in a, in an intersection or not an intersection in a parking lot. And it's like I don't even have to think about it. So I'm doing situational awareness for myself. I'm not really even thinking about it. It's just naturally happening. I'm utilizing a little bit more brain power now since my brain power is not being fully used for situational awareness. It just happens. I'm using a little bit extra to be like, well, what's this car driver doing? Okay, he wants to turn left. Well, where is this car driver going to turn left in? Okay, it's Chevron. Okay, what what part of Chevron? When would they start applying the brakes? When would they do this? I start doing that. I'm serious. I start doing that in my head. Marley, you guys want that? You're okay with everyone here? Even the rookies have great... Yeah, yeah, even rookies... No, yeah, yeah. Yeah, everybody gets to see it. Everybody gets to see the Thursday things. Just crew members get to chit-chat. That's all. Um, so I start thinking about what is this car doing? When are they going to turn? Where are they going to turn into? What's going to be a problem for them to turn into? I'm literally thinking outside of my own body. And I do this with new riders too. I, I figure out, okay, when can they turn? How are they going to turn? So when I see this, and I see this person wants to turn, I see this truck over here. So there's a big truck right here kind of blocking their view. And this person's like, I don't know if I should turn in here because this is actually not supposed to be where you're supposed to turn because it's a left turn for the oncoming traffic. So before I decide to gun it and get past this person, I want to make sure that they are solidified in their decision. Does that make sense, guys? I want to make sure that they are solidified in their decision making and actually act on it. I want to wait until this person's literally inside that turn lane before I decide to pass them and go crazy. Because not only am I worried about that, I'm kind of worried about this truck too. Be like, oh, there's an open fast lane. I'm going to get in that fast lane too. So before I make a movement into something that could possibly enter me into this scenario, because remember, guys, you sit back and watch. That's the point of the space cushion. You're kind of sitting back and watching, making decisions based on stupid drivers. I'm not going to put myself inside of it until I know for sure that this is the type of stuff that's going to happen. So I want to make sure this car driver is, is definitely turning into there before I do this. Before I started accelerating. Now, in this point, what can I do? What can I do? Swerve to the right. Swerve to the right. Okay, swerving to the left is not going to do you any good. Swerving to the right is, is the best you're going to be able to do, whether it's going to be all the way to the right lane or just within your lane. Because at the end of the day, this person still wants to turn left into the Chevron. And the last thing I want them to do is slam the brakes and wait so for their turn to turn left. Which is what happens. Now, if you take a quick look, 
right before the impact. A lot of people are going to start thinking, well, he impacted and then crashed. No. Look at watch watch the bike. So, let's get back up to here. So the bike is squared. You see how the handlebars are squared? A couple frames right before it happens. You see how it starts to do this? Didn't even hit the person. It was a panic brake. Was it caused by a car stopping in front of you? Yes. This is a panic brake. Now, this is where going into red stage and moving over into a different lane position would save you. Swerving versus braking. This is one of those situations. What should we do? Swerve. You have an escape path. Take it. You have to take it because you're not going to have enough total stopping distance to stop in time. And, we, and your body recognizes that. Your body's like, we don't have enough time to stop. I need to slam these brakes hoping to stop. And that's what happens when you go into brown stage. If you take over your uh, unconscious brain and you are conscious with your training, you understand, I got to swerve. Could have swerved around this. Let's learn from that, okay? He locked up his front brakes before the crash. It was caused by a car stopping, but you need to have an escape path. So there's no wrong, there's no right, there's just a, a scenario that we can learn from. Does that make sense? Lex Prue, how you doing? Fifteen more minutes, boys. Fifteen more minutes. Kami, welcome to the Discord. Look at all these new people. Love it. Addy Varso, dance with the bike, baby. Dance with the bike. Yeah, Dom, like, that's the thing is I, I recognize these. Dom, I exactly. Like, you didn't even recognize he panic braked, and it's because it's like a split second prior to an accident. The body's like, we're getting way too close, and it's going to naturally just slam those brakes. It's going to naturally do it. And that, when I say that cars, or when I say that motorcyclists typically are in solo accidents that involve another one, like they'll crash and then slide into another vehicle. This is typically what happens, panic braking. And this is why I say fundamental motorcycle skills. And to be a smart rider, the M portion of smart, okay, look, it says smart rider on the back, DDFM crew smart rider. The M is maintaining fundamental motorcycle skills and then your bike also, and maintaining your bike. But the thing is you need to know how to swerve and then an emergency brake. Like that's all, it, all the other stuff, how to navigate all these different things. Those are, that's all G whiz stuff. That's all, it's all great. Slow speed stuff is very good. Counter is very good. But knowing how to swerve an emergency brake can really save you. It can really save you. And then it'll say, it, you'll know when you need to do it. Okay. So here we go. You ready? You guys ready? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And here we go. We're going. One second. That's just way too loud. It. Can you turn off the music or sound, please? Let's turn off the sound for me. Please. It's just too much. Thank you, Matt. All right, we're going back. All right. Here we go, baby. And here we go. We're going to be launching over this right here. Going over this berm. Look how cool I was. I flipped and flopped everywhere. Hopefully nobody comes up behind me and hits me. Oh, these bumps. Oh, I hit somebody else instead. And now everybody's running me over. Hey, what's up, man? How you doing? Today's a pretty good day, except for I crashed. Now my rental bars are all broken. Oh, my gosh. I've made everybody upset with me. They're going to kick me out of the club. I can't be doing this. Thankfully, I got this really bright green bike. Now we're going to move on to this next one. I'm going to see if I can run over that guy from earlier because he was annoying me. Oh, yeah, here he is. Let me see if I can run him over. Let me run him over. Nope, not going to run him over. Bye. Oh, he's probably dead. But it's fine. I want to get first place. I was in last, but now I'm not in last anymore because those guys fell. Oh, man. Well, that one sucked. Okay. I typically don't talk about stuff that's off-road. That's not my area of expertise. Maybe at some point we'll have a DDFM crew member that is really good with off-road, and we can start adding that. That's an oof. Kill count 50. What's the KDA on this one, guys? Yeah, yeah, it's from my video game nerds. Guys, make sure you hit that join button. Click that join button. Become a rookie or a crew member or a veteran crew member or 
a senior crew member, or a DDFM legend by clicking that join button. Become a member. You get a nice shout out. It's going to pop up. I think it's going to pop up above my head. Nope, it's going to pop up in the far right top corner if you become a crew member. Click that link right there. Let's do it. So you can lose traction like that by applying too much front brake. Or you can lose traction like that when you have something take away the traction from your front tire. That's what it looks like. Dump. Got to click that like button to get credit for this class. Now, if you don't want credit, that's fine. That's fine. You don't have to hit the like button if you don't want to, but you only get credit for the class if you hit like. It's too fast. Whoa. The camera. Tip fib, baby. Tony Cart. What do you think happened there, guys? Crew members, what do you think happened? Real quick. Sorry, I, this this is a crew. Thursdays are typically crew member stuff. So for everybody that's not a crew member, just real quick, I'm gonna I'm gonna put it back. I'm gonna put it back right now. I'm gonna enable uh, members only. So crew member only chat right now. Don't leave yet. Everyone else, don't leave. Okay, we're not stopping. We're not stopping. I just want to get the crew members uh, take on this. Okay. So let's let's get a real. I'm gonna. This is a teachable moment for the crew. Okay. This is a, everyone else that's not a crew. Don't worry. I'm gonna I'm gonna take it off uh, crew member only chat right after this video. Okay. So this is for crew. I want you to tell me. What happened here, okay? I understand the camera's all funky wonky, but what happened here? Why did it, what kind of crash was it? What caused him to crash? And how can we prevent that? That's what I want to know from the crew. Okay? So what type of crash is it? What caused the crash? And how can we prevent that? Okay? Okay, and I'm going to play it back at half speed. The blue wrench uh, means that Scarlet is a moderator. She's doing a great job. She's actually uh, a moderator on the Discord, too. So what caused what type of crash was it? What caused it and and what can we do to not do that? I'm not expecting perfect answers here from the crew. I'm not this is a, this is the teachable moment. This is where I'm trying to be the crew chief here. I'm the DDFM crew chief. I'm trying to let my crew members know this is a learning moment so they can go out and spread this information too. So real quick, uh, we have Dole Dan too fast. Okay, so what caused, uh, well, what type of accident is this? And then what caused it? What, what caused the type? Too fast. Okay, so too fast. So what kind of accident is it? And then how can we like uh, not go that? I, I'm, try I'm trying not to give you the answers. What what type what type of accident is it? He was going too fast. That's what caused it. And then how can we not do it? So how can we not do it? What type of accident was it? Uh, hey everyone, what did I miss? Cam Smith, welcome. He tried to tuck and roll but forgot to tuck. What does a blue wrench? Okay. Uh, two. So Felicimo, too fast around the corner. Bad line of sight. Okay. It ended in a high. So Tommy, high side. So high side. It was caused by going too fast into the turn. So now what can we do? So high side, too fast through the turn, what can we do? A little bit too much speed and fixating, and then on the end, he was running out of road and looked like he really pushed that rear brake. Okay, Marley, good. High side, blind turn, sunlight from the deep shade, too fast to set up turn. Very good, Sean. Very good. 
Changing light conditions contributed for sure. Yes, that definitely could have easily because the sun's in our eyes on this one. So two fast breaks and stood it up, ran off high side. Okay. Too fast in a corner, high side, entry speed too fast. Very good. Very good. Bad lane position, came in hot, didn't lean, and went over the top. 80 CJ5. Good. Uh, Felicima goes, he could have slowed down way beforehand. Near future, I see entering the corner to quick and target fixation to panic when he tried to correct himself. It was high side, and he didn't look. I'll go ahead and I'll keep playing it, guys. I'll keep playing it. Uh, lane position three to start. He could have been in lane three. High side, way too fast, blinded by the sun, maybe. But regardless, he should have slowed down. Way too sharp of a turn at that speed. That geared me out. That's what I wanted to hear. So high side, too fast. So high side is the type of accident. Too fast is what caused it. What's what's a good acronym? What's a good acronym? To, to prevent this. What's a good acronym? We get it from the MSF BRC. The MSF Basic Rider Course. What's a good acronym? I've been saying it all the time. What's the acronym? I'm going to go ahead and open it up for everybody else. But guys, if, if you liked uh, the aspect of being able to chat with DDFM crew members and be a part of that, I plan on doing stuff like this on Thursdays where it's a DDFM crew chat only. So make sure you become a uh, DDFM crew member on YouTube to be able to do that. So Dole Dan, you've been on top of the game. You should get you, – what kind of beard do you have, man? You have a – you need to have a badass, more badass beard. I can't wait till you hit that one year and you get that nice gray beard. But SLPR, slow look, press, and roll. Mr. Out of the Void, C, that's a good one. Search, evaluate, execute. So if you did your C, uh, search, evaluate, execute prior to the turn, you would realize there's a turn coming up. But then you do slow look, press, and roll to navigate that turn. Very good, guys. Very good. This is exactly what I want. Slow yo butt down. <laughs> I love it. So Roger. You, see, that's the thing. Is is even, even those that aren't crew members, they know. This is great. I absolutely love this. You guys are on top of the game. I feel very confident going into this weekend uh, that you guys are going to stay home first and foremost. But if you aren't going to stay home, you're going to do social distancing by yourself out on the roads this weekend when you're riding. I feel confident that you guys are going to do a good job. Okay, so remember, search, evaluate, execute prior to the incident. So you're recognizing the hazard, which is a turn. And then on top of that, you're going to do slow look, press, and roll to navigate that turn. I absolutely love it, guys. You guys are doing a great job. Make sure you click that link in the chat to join the Discord, though. I want to see more people in the Discord. I'm not going to be happy until we hit 5,000 members uh, by the end of, by, before my birthday, July. Before July, I want to see 5,000 Discord members. I'm I'm dead serious. I'm dead serious. So let's go ahead and make it fast speed. Oh, we're we're getting close to the end of the class, guys. We're getting close to the end of the class. The acronym, Ryan. Great question. The acronym for smart. The acronym for smart. So to become a DDFM crew smart rider, the S is to seek and recognize hazardous situations. The M is to maintain your fundamental motorcycle skills and to maintain your motorcycle. Okay. A is to acquire personal protective equipment and use it. Not just for yourself, but for your bike. So get some frame sliders, get some other things to protect your bike. R is to rescue other riders using medical training. So accident scene management, bystander medical assistance. In case somebody does crash, you know how to take care of them. On top of that, you can use that information and that training to take care of other people in any type of traumatic situation. The T is to train and mentor other riders. S-M-A-R-T. T is to train and mentor other riders. In order to become really good at what you're talking about uh, in, in practice is by having to teach somebody how to do it. And that's, that's what I'm having the crew here. The crew here is supposed to be teaching and helping and mentoring other riders whether they're new or even old, using the information that they personally are good at. So if you're really good at finding gear, you know, go ahead and help out people find gear. If you're really good at slow speed maneuvers, help people out with slow speed maneuvers. If you're good at seeking and recognizing hazards all the time, help out other people in that aspect also. That's the whole point of being a smart rider. So we're going to move over to the lounge real quick because, guys, here's the thing. is that If you become a DDFM crew member, you get to have access to the crew lounge. Okay, this is this is a firehouse, guys, but this is our firehouse. This that's the that's the beauty of this. We get to have a ton of fun in our own fire station, firehouse, whatever you want to call it. And this right here is the crew lounge. Okay, we have the classroom for everybody else, but the only members, Patreon or YouTube memberships, are allowed to be in here, unless I say you can. Unless I say yes, yes, as as long as I say you can. Okay, you you need to get out. 
Okay, you need to get out. You need to go back to the class. Why did you follow me? I don't get it. But yeah, we get to have a lot of fun here. We got we got racing games. We got you know MotoGP simulation because we're all stuck inside. We need to still uh, work on our skills. And very soon, I'm gonna be having a garage. We're gonna we're gonna update this facility. We're gonna have a garage to where we work on maintenance of our motorcycles together. We have a gym to where we get in shape so that we're not you know getting fat during this coronavirus thing because uh, we eat a lot of pizza. But there's going to be a lot of new upgrades and a lot of new updates to this. So if you want to be a part of this, if you want to have access to basically everything and be a smart rider with us, a DDFM crew smart rider, uh, make sure you click that join button. Okay, guys? So let's go back to the class. We're going to end the class pretty soon. Okay? Here's the thing. We need to make sure. We absolutely... I'm going to go ahead and put the... Matt, can you put the... Uh, yeah, thank you, man. Appreciate it. This is the Discord. It's absolutely 100% free. I want you guys to be a part of the Discord, okay? The Discord is absolutely 100% free. And I want you to be a part of this. And this is how we get together. This is how we find out who's near us, who we can ride with. Look at Scarlet's right there on the chat right there. She's doing a great job. She's a moderator on the Discord and during this session right here, during this class session. But right here, look. This is this is the Discord. It's absolutely free. You click you click that link in the in the chat right there, and join up. We're gonna have fun. We're gonna hang out together during, after, uh, before these streams, before these classroom sessions, and it's free. Minak eighty four, welcome to the party, man. Welcome. You are on YouTube, Jacob H. Happy, how you doing? Expectation in reality. I haven't checked into Cambodia, but I would never have thought it was a place to settle down. Good to know. There's the stream. Look at that. There's the stream. <laughs> Look at that. So we're going to have a lot of fun. There's a bunch of cool things uh, associated with it. So if you're wondering, you know, what everything is, here's the crew lounge. This is the crew lounge right here. So this, if you want to get away from the regular lounge, which is up here, this is the regular lounge. Uh, but you can join the crew lounge. We have a food and drink section, pet section, a camping section, a gamer section. Look at that. Boom. I stream on Twitch all the time. Let's go over to Twitch. Uh, when I say all the time, every so often, actually. I've been playing Doom Eternal lately. I might play today. I don't know. I'm going to have a little bit of fun with that one. Uh, but, yeah, let's get out of that. Uh, the gym. We have the gym. Motorcycle media section. So everyone's posting the pictures of their bikes, and they're so beautiful. Love it. You guys are awesome. But, yeah, the lounge. Guys, you need to join. You need to click that join button. Okay? Graybeard is one year on page. Uh, Dole Dan, Graybeard is one year as a YouTube member. There's only, like, three people with it. There's only, like, three people with it. But, yeah, one year on uh, as, a, as a YouTube member. So if you click that link that's in the chat, there's the Discord, and then there's the YouTube membership. But if you notice, we got Nitro Booster, Scarlet is the mod, I'm here at the top. We got the Patreon crew. Look at all these patrons. You guys are awesome. YouTube crew. I wish I could put you guys all together, but Discord won't let me. Look at 686 people online on top of that. Backy Boy TV, welcome. Look at that. Let's go ahead and click like. But guys, make sure you join. Because we're going to have a lot of fun. Okay? With that said, thank you guys for stopping by the class. In order to get full credit, you have to hit that like button. But I will be seeing you in the Discord. I will be seeing you in the Discord. I'll be seeing you later, though. Roninster. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. What's up, Roger C60? How you doing? Blue maroon? That's two different colors. That's insane. Oh, we got people from the Netherlands, man. We got a lot of people. We do, actually. You guys are going to find people near you. I promise you that. Promise you that. You're going to find people. Several people are typing. Several people are typing.
man from Solka. You're welcome, Tommy Der Thomas. We do this Tuesdays and Thursdays. We we do this Tuesdays and Thursdays. What's up, man? Watching your stream. The only you thought you were the only Dutch guy. Nope. Look at this. Keep emphasizing SLPR. I was out riding some curvy roads this afternoon, practicing. Amazing how much better I ride when I remember it. Yeah, yeah. And it's so much easier to add speed. Does that make sense? It's so much easier to add. I bet you there's been a few times with practicing. Oh my gosh. Jesse and Bailey. Which one is it? Is it Jesse or Bailey? Which one is it? But welcome to the crew. You know, both of you get it. Any spouse of a crew member gets to visit and hang out. I'm serious. That's just how it is. We're a family here, guys. We're a family. We're here to take care of each other. We definitely are here to take care of each other. So, you know what? Jesse, if it's you, then Bailey can come hang out too. If Bailey, if it's you, Jesse, come hang out with us. Go play some video games. All right, man. You bring After 10 o'clock, though, after 10 p.m., if you guys are spending the night, uh, after 10 p.m., spouses have to go home. You know what I mean? You can get a little crazy, you know what I'm saying? You get a little crazy. So I need some rookies. Yeah, 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 rookies. Yeah, I need you to start stacking chairs. Everyone's starting to leave right now. Okay, we're down to 138 people in here. We had over 200 people in the class. Rookies, I need you to start. Yeah, yep. Yep, Jesse, you're one of them. You just became a rookie, dude. You got to help me stack some chairs. Okay, we're all going to stack together as soon as we get out of it. Marley, come stack some chairs. Actually, Marley, uh, don't stack chairs. Go grab those Lysols. OOTV or OOTV, just join. Okay, but yeah, grab some Lysol wipes. Uh, wipe, some, wipe the chairs down. Okay, nobody touch their face. Nobody touch their face. Wash your hands before you start touching your face. Okay. Well, one sec. Nobody's giving U T V. There we go. I was gonna say nobody's giving it. Andrew Santoyo, thank you for giving the bike wave to the new member. Yeah, stacks. I don't know what we're gonna do about that, man. Oh, Tony, that's the wrong. Tony, you're, that's my punch. No, 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 no. That's that's. Yeah, it does have a kick to it, man. Yeah, Marley, wipe it down. Mar, did you fart, Marley? Seriously. We're all in the same room and you farted. <sighs> Jet, uh, who's hogging the who's hogging the hand sanitizer? We should, I mean, we should have some on the walls. Every doorway has a dispenser. Has a dispenser. Check it out. We have more in the crew lounge. We have more in the crew lounge. Crew, if you're still here, we're gonna go back to the lounge real quick. Okay, we're gonna go once everyone leaves. Once everyone leaves. Once everybody, yeah. Oh, Marley, I know girls fart. Trust me. Dole Dan, dude, you just got promoted. Congrats. Dole Dan just got everyone say congrats to Dole Dan. He just got promoted to a veteran crew member. Uh, he doesn't have to stack chairs anymore or wipe down things anymore unless he wants to. But here's the thing. It's your job to mentor some of these rookie members. So if you want them to do what they need to do, do it with them. Okay, Dole Dan? Thank you for being a member, man. Or upgrading. Getting promoted. Really appreciate that. That's really awesome. Congratulations, Dole Dan. We're going to get some ice cream for Dole Dan so that he can celebrate his promotion to veteran crew member. All right. I think everybody... I think all the whole class. I think I think I think the public left. Okay. I think the public left. Okay. So now that now that the public has left. Wrong button. Hey, what's up? Come on, push the Matt. There we go. Now that the whole now that the uh the public left crew 
Guys, real quick. You guys did a great job. You guys did a great job. I'm serious. I was I was I was watching the chat. Um, I saw hands. Uh, they raised. They raised up. They're gonna ask a question. Tiger, Felissimo, Scarlet. I mean, I I can't even name everybody's name. Jesse just joined. We got a new promotion from Dole Dan. He was in it, answering some questions. We actually had some some non-members uh, answer some questions. It's really cool. I, like I am so proud of you guys. You guys are doing an amazing job. Let's keep this momentum going. We're going into the weekend. Um, if you're able to, like, let's say talk to a friend. You know, I understand social distancing, so maybe text message or whatever. If you can, encourage the smart writing principles. I don't care if, if, if you want to use, hey, watch Dan Dan the Fireman. I don't, I don't even care. That's not what we're here for, right, guys? That's not what we're here for. I don't care if you watch my videos, if you watch Moto Jitsu, if you watch Canyon Chasers, if you watch Yamaha Champion Riding School, if you watch MC Rider, if you watch Fort 9. I don't, I don't, I don't. Yeah, it doesn't even matter. It doesn't even matter. Because at the end of the day, I want you to follow the principles of being a smart rider. Where you get that information is up to you. Okay? It's fundamental motorcycle skills. If you can learn better from uh, Moto Jitsu, learn it from him. If you like situational awareness stuff from me, get it from me. If there's somebody else out there that does better and talks better when it comes to situational awareness, please go to them and then point them to me so I can talk to them and hang out with them and, and figure out what I can learn to do better. Okay, so I just want to say thank you. Yeah, 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 guys. You guys, you guys have been, you guys have been amazing. Seriously, seriously, you guys have been awesome. Funko, dude, just welcome, welcome to the crew, welcome to the crew. Guys, have some fun. Guys, have some fun. I'm gonna take my doggo for a walk. Okay, I'm gonna take my doggo for a walk. But I want you guys to enjoy what you deserve. You deserve this. Yeah. You absolutely deserve this. I am blown away by how awesome this crew is. <sighs> this weekend, guys, show up to the crew lounge this weekend. I'm buying everybody pizza. Okay, guys? I'll be seeing you around. I'll be seeing you around, Funko. Definitely will, man. It's good to have you on board. Of course, Firefly, of course. What's up, Risen? Rizwind? How you doing, man? Guys, join the Discord. Click that link in the in the chat. Join the Discord. That's what's going on right now. good bike Brisbane that's a good bike it's a good it's a good bike for a starter bike check out the ninja 400 also and go ahead Rizwin ask that question in the new rider questions also
Baki anytime, man. You've been asking about everything, Rizwin? Uh, no, I, I think it's a good bike. I think it's a good bike. Mr. Out of the Void, your, your OOTV. Awesome, man. Uh, you have to, uh, there's a time delay, uh, Mr. Out of the Void. It's usually like, it's like 10 minutes. It prevents people from joining and causing a problem. You know what I mean? So it, hopefully, like, when people join and they have an issue with me, they calm down after 10 minutes. That's all that is. R3 Ninja 400 Honda Rebel KTM 390. I, uh, honestly, I, I really like the R3 and Ninja 400s. I really do. Honda Rebel is a good bike for... Uh, a cruiser beginner bike. Uh, Ninja 400 or a CBR over the MT-07 would be better for a beginner. But you could do it if uh, you ride within your ability, not the bike's ability. The MT-07 will last you forever. MT-07 is a great bike. But I would start off like possibly a 400. I would do a 400. 